Welcome to my videos on the designing, the building and the sailing of my Sharpie inspired trailer yacht. In this video, I reinforce the cap and top, work out the location of the cap and top running rigging fittings and work on the fastening of the hardware. I also continue with some of the interior work. I hope you enjoy the video. When the day starts off like this, the humidity is low in the air, it's a good day for glassing. The mission today is to get some more straps on the cabin top and to do that I'm going to have to shrink the deck down a little bit which is what you can see going on here. I'm trying to shrink the top of it so it pulls the deck down onto those temporary frames and then I can get some carbon straps on and put the heat back on so it doesn't shrink while the epoxy is curing. As you can see the starting off point it's about 9.4% and you can see the gap above there which I'm trying to get rid of by shrinking this cabin top. I can feel the heat inside the boat. We're getting there. That line went, it went up to the line when I started. So it's 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Are we good to go for glassing? Gap? Check. Nothing. Moisture content checked to 6.8 and the battery just went flat on my readout. So 6.8 is great. Check. Hygrometer, what a funny word, is showing low humidity. Check. Temperature is dropping from 25 because I opened the doors so the air won't be expanding the timber. Check, we're good to go for glassing. Today was one of those days, you might remember I started out saying today is a good day for glassing and checked off a few things that are ideal for glassing. I was just going to do these two bands over the top and it went really well after the deck had pulled down onto those temporary frames. I thought, oh well, I may as well do the others as well. The other two, which meant I had to put a temporary frame back inside it, which had fallen out. And then I thought, well, I've gone to all this trouble to dehumidify the deck. What I should do now, and it would be easy, is to resin between these bands and put peel ply on. How well will these copper bands work, you might ask? Well, you saw how flexible that area there was. And I put those a band above it and below it, that hatch, and it stiffened up that in area incredibly. All the plates have arrived for the lifting gear. <clears throat> These three parts go together. There's a sheave in there. And this goes on top of the daggerboard. Those plates go in there with a sheave in there. So I've still got plenty to do. It's Monday morning. I don't have all the deck fittings yet that I need to carry on with that job. Um, I don't have the um, fiberglass uni that I'm going to use on the interior. Just, and certainly just beef it up in certain areas where deck fittings are going because of some of the loads. So I'm going to work on the interior. Pretty easy to remove these frames but I've given it some temporary support. It's probably cleared after my last video that I'm entering a situation which is in reverse to a little bit of a problem which I resolved in the last video and that I had gaps between the temporary frame and the deck because of the, the humidity had gone up compared to when I had um, actually started the, the planking of the deck, so the deck had virtually grown in size because of the humidity. Well, today the humidity is right down, and um, it's you know even in the morning, so it's going to be a really dry day. So what's going to happen when I take out these temporary frames is I'm starting off with no gap, and I expect it to pull down slightly. The screws are removed. Let's see how strong this hot glue is. I don't have a lot of faith in it. 
So I thought so good. It was barely holding it thin. Whoa. could barely fit a playing card between the top of my head and the cabin top. It does mean that any screw fittings that I put through the deck, I'm going to have to keep them as flush as possible because I don't want to be knocking my head on them. But this is my first feel of what the space is like in this area and I'm really happy. Last one, it really does feel like a milestone event in the construction of this yacht. And this plywood, which was X cladding from the house, that's the inside of it. The outside was looking a bit rougher. I can see from this that the deck hasn't sunken down hardly at all. And you wouldn't expect it to because to do to go too far it's got to compress that very heavy carbon fibre band that goes across the top of each of these temporary frames on the outside. So it's pretty much what I expected. Well, what a difference that makes. One good thing is, this wood does sand easily. What I think I'll do is, I found this chart which shows that for 5 sixteenths, if it's 12 sixteenths deep, I think it's 3,600 pounds force before it shears or pulls the bolt out. So that's absolutely more than enough. So I think if I make up a fiberglass sandwich, which is this kind of like that deep and the width of this plate, um, that goes down the side of the daggerboard casing, I don't know, 100 millimeters. So I can tap into it as far as I want to. I've made up this block of fiberglass 18 millimeters thick for the um, lifting plate for the daggerboard casing. So the um, plate will have screws which tap into this um, fiberglass block. I'm a little bit concerned and that's why I put the fan going that it's getting pretty warm and I should have probably expected it. So I'll have to hang around for a while to make sure it doesn't overheat. It's early Tuesday morning and I'm outside having a look at how this fiberglass wedge I made up that'll support the plate on top of the daggerboard casing. I'm having a look at how it went and I put it outside because it was heating up even though I used for most of it the slow hardener. It's so thick that um, I probably should have done it in two or three steps so the heat could radiate off it and um, I did take a little bit of a risk um, doing it all in one go. If... Most of the deck hardware bits arrived today so I've been spending some of the day trying to work out where things go. I haven't welded up my stainless parts there yet but that's looking really good. Got that deck organizer there, which will take another line. Got the clutches there. I think it would be probably good to lift them up a little bit 
make that angle to the winch a little bit better. The deck here is sloping down of course, but it's a really good sign when you put the bits on temporarily, you put the level on. Oops, <laughs> there's a spinner stuck to the bottom of it. And it's pretty bang on level. Let's come from the CAD drawing. This is my last chance to check if I've got everything where I need it to be for with the lines, the running lines that go across the cabin top. Some are more critical than others. This line, for example, raises and lowers the dagger board, the ballasted dagger board. So uh, I want to keep that everything pretty much in line for that one through the clutches here. That's pretty straightforward. I've pretty much marked that out in the boat already. It's good to go. Just have to put some heavy inserts in for this um, organizer on the deck here. This line is an out haul. This line is an out haul. They run either side of the hatch. These two lines fill the mast. They roll the mast. They rotate the mast to fill the sail. This one's more critical. This one will be used to pull the sail out. Although the out hauls will do that most of the time. The two out hauls. Um, this line here, there could be up to, up to three lines coming from the bow, but this line raises and lowers the mast. There's a swivel at the top of the mast. That's a critical line. I'll probably put a cleat here somewhere as well, so any of these lines that are critical, they can not only be on the clutch, but around the cleat as well, and be of red color, so I can tell anybody on board, don't touch the red lines, please. Um, so this is an organizer here. It'll be another triple organizer down here. So I think I've thought of everything. I'm pretty keen to drill these holes in the deck and put some inserts in before I put some heavy glassing around some of these areas on the inside and the outside. I've decided on the inside of the boat to use fiberglass uni, which is on its way as I speak, because I'm not going to be doing much finishing inside the boat in the way of um, I've got double bias in there most of it for most of it and I'm just going to put a satin finish over it so any carbon fiber that I put on the inside of the boat will really stand out and I don't know if I want it to d dominate the space in there so this is uh, the rendered version of this drawing, it's not finished by any means. It's in work in progress. The lifelines, for example, it's just going to be a single line, except for one line really close to the deck here, which will act as a tow rail. In theory, this is a yacht where you don't have to go up on the bow much, but there'll be handrails here. Got some stainless bits on the way for those, for the feet. And I'm still thinking about how any of these fastings that go through the deck, how to make them fairly flush fitting on the inside because the proximity to your head will be a bit concerning. And you'll know about it if you knocked your head against a dome nut when you're in a, usually happens when you're in a hurry to do something. So anyway, I'm off to the boat to do some hole drilling and some filling up of those holes with epoxy resin thicken the epoxy resin with glue filler in it. Yes, you can grow pineapples in New Zealand. They are growing outdoors. This one's indoors, but it's a beauty. And that smell, it's awesome. Awesome. Homegrown pineapple. <laughs> oh, that's so good.
I glued the wedges in last night. Today I'll do some filling with epoxy glue around here. Then I'll flush it off. Let's go and have a look inside. Looks like the gluing went well. See if I can knock off these blocks. It's good that the hot glue lets go when you want it to. Okay, some coving in here and a layer of double bias over that. Well that's the end of this video. In the next video I hope to have most of the cabin top done with all its fittings. Although there's still quite a bit more to do. There's the handrails. I'll have to get some bending done. But uh, we're getting there. Cloaked in folds of midnight Water side by side We sons and daughters